Well, is what, what's your story, David? You know, her, Heidi's telling us that she was assigned to female. What did it feel like to be assigned male? Um, I never knew any different. Um, I was, you know, I was always led to believe I was male. I was led to believe mainly through silence that there was nothing, um, nothing wrong with me, nothing I could talk about even. Um, no one ever spoke to me at all uh, about my, my state, my condition. Um, and this is um, one of the amazing things about being here at this retreat is um, to hear so many people telling my story over and over again. Um, They're telling your story? Yeah, the, the pattern is, is so amazingly similar and we all come from very different places and very different backgrounds and very different bodies and yet our experience is remarkably coherent. Um, and that I, you know, I find that amazing and, and uh, uh, liberating, really, to, to finally find out um, that, you know, I'm not alone. Um, it's, it's extraordinary, really. Did you have genital surgery? Um, I did, um, although uh, it was not called uh, reconstructive surgery or anything like that. Um, I had a gonad moved, um, and I believe I had uh, hypospadias repair, um, although I have no record on that. Um, I was never told anything about it. Um, and uh, in fact, even though I have, I believe I've recovered all the medical records I'm probably ever going to find, uh, they still really don't say anything, um, which uh, is kind of, I think, kind of remarkable. Um, uh, either through uh, a, a profound state of ignorance, which I find hard to accept, or a denial. You know, um, I recently had uh, one of my doctors say to me, "Well, you know, why not? Why, but but perhaps they didn't want to make an issue of something that they felt they could do nothing about." Um, you know, uh, of course, there was a lot they could have done about it. They could have at least told me about it. So, no. with Heidi, they lied to you, and, and with you, David, they just didn't tell you anything? Didn't tell me anything, anything at all. Um, and they lied in, in the way that when I asked for uh, information, they denied that they had any information, um, and which I, I still find remarkable, actually. What would you do if it was your child? Love him. Love him. Uh, what else can you do? Uh, you know, I think first you have to love someone. Then if changes are going to be made, that's something different. Um, yeah. My name is Max, and um, speaking of babies, uh, along with Leslie Feinberg, I'm, I'm really looking forward to the day when a child is born, you know, people put a, I don't know, yellow sign on the front lawn that says it's a baby instead of it's a boy or it's a girl um, I want um, I want uh, anyone hearing this watching this um, to know um, that for intersexuals to come together is an incredibly um, powerful and moving and especially healing experience and the doctors who told me that it would be inappropriate um, for me to talk to other intersexuals were just plain wrong. And, and I want anyone watching this, be they, um, you know, historians or doctors or intersex people, wh whomever, um, I, wa I want you to know that we are just the tip of the iceberg. You know, we are 10 people gathered together in Northern California, but it's just, it's just the beginning and I can just feel how this is going to grow and, uh, and, and we're going to change. Um, the way that we're, the way that we're treated, the way that, um, I mean, the way that we were treated can never be changed and we'll, we'll carry those scars with us, but, um, but we can make, um, we, we can make the world, uh, you know, a better place, uh, as Leslie Feinberg wrote to me recently, um, a, a new world is in, in birth and, uh, I really believe that. Oh, grab, me too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to hide.
Hi, I'm Tom. I, I'm the real hermaphrodite. These these people are all imposters. I didn't come here to be insulted. <laughs> I'm just no. down here. Just need to your mouth. Okay. It's a clip on. Yeah, I've known Cheryl through correspondence for maybe a couple of years. Mm, I lose I track. Three years. Yeah. Came across her, one of her articles by chance. Uh, I'm a hypospadiac monster. <laughs> and uh, I went through a surgery thing. Uh, it wasn't my idea. But anyway, I was, uh, I was told it was a hernia. So actually, I'm really a hernia patient. I don't, so that's why they, they covered it up. But uh, anyway, I'm glad this, this is kind of strange. I'd imagined these kind of, there's, I thought I was the only one, but I didn't know, maybe. For such a long time, I was, uh, I knew there was something wrong, I mean, there's something <clears throat> that wasn't quite right, um, but there was a, I, took me quite a while to figure out exactly what, uh, what it was. When I got, uh, the, the word hypospadiac was dropped inadvertently, my parents, so, after looking it up in the encyclopedia, it referred me to the M section, which, under monster, I said, ah! What but, would you have liked them to do to you? Uh, nothing at all. Just left me alone. I wish people would have just stopped helping me. But, uh, anyway, it was a... I'm still not sure what the intentions were. Whether they're really just mistaken good intentions or... Sometimes I feel like my parents were like, or like people who cut off the legs of their children that they might stand taller in the eyes of the world. Uh, they were always impressed with, the, with their position towards uh, people outside their public image. Kind of sorry to think that. But, uh, anyway, this is, this is a little strange. I'd imagine these, I'd be meeting some people like me eventually. And, uh, hmm, may have come about. So are, so are these people, people that you feel are like you? Yes, I do. I was going to say... Um, They're all crazy. Uh, when I was talking to the doctors this last Christmas season and finally got the honest-to-God truth from them, uh, part of the original diagnosis, other than um, having a, you know, undetermined sex, uh, part of the problem was that I had micropenis that was also hypospadic and so it's like I had three strikes right there I had a, a, a too small penis that had a hole somewhere other than at the end and I had feminized you know a, a, a more feminine looking partially fused scrotal sac than having this nice little healthy you know penis and, and scrotum and testes and everything that was all where it was supposed to be and it was like it's like, why? Why do they insist on fixing things? So, so what would you have liked them to do for you? What would you do for, for a child who's born like you? I would leave them the hell alone unless there was a, a proof of dire consequences if things weren't, if some kind of intervention wasn't taken. Let them I mean, don't uh, let them grow up to like five, six, or seven, and then all of a sudden start mutilating their body and taking things away that they've grown accustomed to having. But of course, they removed my testes when I was seven months old because, well, due to possible future cancerous, you know, growth and there's also in my records where it says and also to prevent a possible masculinizing puberty like oh my god we can't have this l this little girl that we're brainwashing into thinking that she's a normal little girl growing up and hitting puberty and all of a sudden becoming a boy it's like they need to, to deal straight with the parents 
uh, deal straight with the kids when the kids start asking questions and stop the lies. Did you have something to add to that money? Well, I'm just sitting here realizing that this is a historic moment um, and this is about breaking the secrets and lies. I was born in 1953. Um, my mum had lost three children and I was the product of her being given male hormones and there was a intravenous transfusion of the hormones. Um, the first words that were uttered by the attendant nurse when I was born, because it, it happened in a hurry, was, oh my God, it was hermaphrodite. So I was actually labelled <laughs> the only time, the first few seconds after my birth. I was born with both a penis and what everyone assumed was a vaginal opening. I've only actually found out just this year that it wasn't. It was a urogenital sinus. Um, I was raised as a male child for the first year. That was common practice in New Zealand then. And my sex was identified as was many hermaphrodites. Do you want to hold this for a second? That was the test to see which gender I was going to be assigned. And because males can't have uteruses, um, my sex assignment was changed to female. I did not have the surgery, however, to change or feminize that part of my body until I was eight. It was done in a hospital in total secrecy. I was taken there and dropped off by my parents who did not tell me why I was in hospital or what was going to happen. It was done in a male ward, but I was in a little tiny room off the side of the ward. Um, before the operation, I had I don't know how many doctors and people come to um, look at the freak and I was taken into a, a teaching theatre, um, not sedated, and the surgeon who was going to do the operation on me actually did it and explained to everybody. Um, I'd been raised in a family where I was not allowed to talk about it, where I was not allowed to show anybody and the confusion of lying there on the table with all these people looking at me. Um, I have had other operations, I have had my ears removed and reduced in size and made smaller. I have had operations on my face to feminize me. And for the people who watch this film in the future, I just hope that by the time some years has passed that this practice of mutilating um, little children stops and that we're allowed to live who we are, unmutilated, and, and we make the decisions about how that's going to be. And I want to thank this person here who is responsible for all of us sitting here on this rug here in California this afternoon.